Greetings followers of the Dark Knight. It's been a while since I did a video so I figured I'd do something today. Uh, um, where do I start? You guys remember the eManage install video I did? So I wanted just to pick a segment of it today and that's in regards to launch control. You will pardon the camera work but I hope you get the idea. Launch control is basically to help you get the best traction and power off the line. And so I'll just walk you through quickly what this setup is. Uh, the Dark Knight is running on a single channel ignition system. And uh, here are the ignition cut settings, basically at what RPM to start, whether to adjust uh, timing or not and at what rpm to cut it the shift up section is for auto boxes and it'll tell the trans transmission when to shift up throttle position is when you'd like the launch control to activate most people put a high 90 or a high 80 depending on your tps config and the ignition adjustment is how much you want to retard the ignition when the start rpm is engaged that's what these check marks are for so you can choose to adjust uh, both during cut and during start or just either. Uh, the number of VS pulses, VS here stands for vehicle speed pulse, is basically to tell the e-manage when to disengage launch control because it assumes you've started movement and you no longer need the setting active. So yep, that's pretty much it. came on uh, it was about 0.5 bar let's try it again and see If you do have a turbocharged car, it does help to also adjust your boost configs to help with launch control. And in this case, I'm running the uh, EBC solenoid of the sub-injector map, which you can pretty much uh, base on several algorithms here. TPS, airflow voltage, or uh, absolute pressure. I prefer absolute pressure because it pretty much determines what the manifold is doing at any particular instance so you can change the scale here both rpm and uh, manifold pressure depending on your configs mine runs from about 0.8 negative all the way to 1.31 and as you can see the color bands here 100 percent all the way to about 0 0.8 uh, bar and uh, it starts at just after positive pressure is attained. 
in a nutshell if you look at the rpms here from 500 to 2650 the solenoid is zeroed out all the way to what's that 7200 at anything in the negative uh, manifold pressure reason being you only need the solenoid to be active when you're making boost and in this case I set the solenoid to shut at 3000 rpm and anything above 0 0.1 bar which basically means we are generating boost so it will stay shut to improve spool time all the way to redline and uh, you can see at around 0.5 or 0.6 bar I start to taper it off reducing the percentages and the rpm scale so at 3300 rpm and 0.8 bar it will start to pulse the solenoid to relieve it of pressure this is especially helpful if you're running a very big turbo on a low displacement engine and as you can see here anything above 4700 and uh, and uh, one bar will pretty much have the solenoid venting to uh, release the waste gate and not build any more boost so yeah I think that pretty much makes sense you can configure all this uh, here under map select and you will have to pick the sub injector map then configure it as, 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 as you want so yeah boys and girls that's pretty much it for those who are wondering this is a uh, virtual box oracle uh, virtual box manager i'm running a virtual machine on a, a windows 8.1 host and it's been fairly comfortable you don't need much to run this as you can see here my configs i've only assigned very little memory and uh, display is also hogging off the graphics card and my storage is not much, only 3 gig, because I sometimes dump log files in here and I need a place to keep it. So if you need help setting this up, you can give me a buzz and I'll sort you out.